This is VOA News. I'm David Berg. President Donald Trump says he is delaying a nationwide sweep to deport people living in the U.S. illegally. We get more on this story from AP's Ben Thomas. It starts, you know, during the course of this next week, maybe even a little bit earlier than that. That's what President and Trump told reporters as he headed off to Camp David Saturday morning. But a couple of hours later, he tweeted that he was delaying the operations for two weeks at the request of Democrats. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi responded with her own tweet saying the delay is welcome and will provide time to work on comprehensive immigration reform adding families belong together. Earlier, President Trump laid out what he expects to see. We need Congress to fix the loopholes and fix asylum, and we will have the cleanest border there is. Ben Thomas, Washington. Meanwhile, U.S.-Iran tensions continued to escalate Saturday as Iran warned it would react sharply to any re- re- perceived, that is, aggression against it while President Donald Trump vowed to impose more sanctions on the Islamic Republic. Trump told reporters at the White House before leaving for Camp David, we are putting additional sanctions on Iran in an effort to prevent the country from obtaining nuclear weapons. The president also said that war against Iran was still a possibility. Later Saturday, Trump tweeted from Camp David, We're putting major additional sanctions on Iran on Monday. I look forward to the day that sanctions come off Iran and they become a productive and prosperous nation again. Earlier Saturday, Iran's foreign ministry spokesman Abbas Musavi told the semi-official Tasnim News Agency that Tehran would not allow any of its borders to be violated. He said Iran will firmly confront any aggression. This is VOA News. Anti-Russian protesters gathered in the center of the Georgian capital, Tbilisi, for the third day of demonstrations on Saturday. Thousands of people with banners and placards calling Russia an occupying state and mocking President Vladimir Putin peacefully listened to speeches from an improvised stage in front of the parliament building. A woman who identified herself as Nini was one of those protesters. I want to live in a country with democratic values. And I just want, don't want to exist. I just want to live in a peaceful, peaceful country. That's why I'm protesting and that's why I'm here. Georgia and Russia earlier traded blame for an outbreak of unrest in Tbilisi sparked by the visit of a Russian lawmaker, which led to police using tear gas and rubber bullets to stop furious crowds. Tensions between Moscow and Tbilisi ran high, and on Friday, Putin signed a decree suspending Russian passenger flights from Russia to Georgia from July 8th to protect people from what the Kremlin called criminal actions. Mauritania has begun counting ballots from its presidential election with supporters of the ruling party candidate Mohamed Ul Ghazouani, a former general and defense minister, claiming victory. Ghazouani is heavily favored to replace outgoing president Mohamed Ould Abdil Aziz, who is stepping away after serving the maximum two five-year elected terms. Opposition candidates have complained about potential fraud, noting the absence of international observers and the printing of ballot papers by a company with ties to the ruling party. The election was the first in Mauritania's history since independence from France in 1960 to choose a successor to a democratically elected president. Dozens of protesters were arrested after they shut down the street outside the New York Times building in Manhattan Saturday. AP's Julie Walker tells us why. The group Extinction Rebellion hung banners on the New York Times building as well as the Port Authority bus terminal and then sat down on 8th Avenue and blocked traffic. A police recording blasted a message telling protesters they'd be arrested if they refused to move. Todd Fernandez said he came here to be arrested. He wants to make the point that media organizations like The Times need to make climate change the headline every day. There needs to be a paradigm shift within the media. You need to stop looking at this as if you're reporting on the climate and Mars and start being citizens of the United States and reporting on this like the true crisis that it is. The Times says it supports the group's right to express their point of view but disagrees. The paper says it published almost 800 articles about the climate last year. Julie Walker, New York. For more, visit VOANews.com. I'm David Bird, VOA News.